Hello everyone! In this video I'm going to show you the basics of a correct piano posture. If you're watching this video on YouTube, make sure you also visit my website pianocareer.com where I will explain in a written form uh, all the instructions that uh, you're about to see now. In order to have a correct, relaxed, confident and comfortable posture at the piano, you need to keep in mind five basic things. The first one is your attitude. Yes, I'm serious and yes, I think that uh, by having a positive attitude, by having a calm and confident state of mind, you're going to increase your productivity and really enjoy all the time that you spend at this amazing instrument. The second element of a correct piano posture is the piano bench. Here the rule is very simple, just keep the golden middle. Not too low and not too high, not too close to the instrument and not too far from the instrument. To make sure that you've adjusted uh, the height of your bench properly, just place your hands on the keyboard and make sure that uh, first you can reach the keyboard, you're not too far. Second, that your elbows are not pointing backwards, so you're not too close to the instrument. You need to be at a comfortable distance that will allow you to reach all the keys. And of course, regarding the height, you need to make sure that your elbows are aligned with the keyboard. At the same time, I'm going to tell you a little secret. If you think that you lack physical power and it's hard for you to control the quality of the sound, to play something uh, with a very big uh, sound volume, then you can keep your elbows by adjusting your bench slightly, only slightly higher than the level of the keyboard. And this way you will have leverage that will allow you to fully control the quality of the sound and the depth of your key attack. The third element of a correct piano posture is your back. Here again we have a very simple rule. Always try to keep your back as straight as possible. A straight back has many benefits. First of all, it will allow you to play well, it will allow you to fully develop your pianistic skills without affecting your health. And second, of course, a straight back is extremely beneficial for your image. Because, uh, let's face it, nobody likes to look at a pianist who's slouching and who's not feeling comfortable. And another important thing, as my academy piano professor always used to say, when we play at the piano, we need to play with dignity. As uh, also Rubinstein used to say in one of his amazing uh, video masterclasses that I recently watched on YouTube, it's important to play with dignity, with a feeling of nobility, but without showing off. So for this it's extremely important to have the straight back and to have a simple, modest attitude, without pomposeness and at the same time without uh, slouching or without uh, making a clown out of yourself. So our image always has to correspond to the meaning of the music that we're trying to send to the audience. Your legs and your feet are the fourth element of a correct piano posture. In order to avoid uh, feeling unstable when you play, please don't place your legs under the piano bench. Keep them near the pedals if you're a beginner and you're not using the pedals yet, or on the pedal if you use the pedal during your playing. And your left leg, if it's not using the left pedal, should be placed near the left pedal or for having more leverage and uh, more stability, you can place it slightly to the left at a small distance from the right leg. And finally, we have reached the fifth element of a correct piano posture. And uh, personally, I consider it the most interesting of all because it involves our shoulders, arms, wrists and fingers. As I already told you, you need to keep your back straight your shoulders down, relaxed. You should never raise your shoulders during your playing because this creates tension and tension, as we all know, is your worst enemy when it comes to playing the piano. Your elbows should be kept at a slight distance from your body, not too close and not too far. This distance should be comfortable, should feel good and should allow you to control the entire keyboard without any problems. Your elbows should be flexible all the time because if your elbows are tensed, the weight coming from your back. Instead of reaching the keyboard, instead of reaching the tips of your fingers and going into the keyboard, will remain trapped here. As I explain in one of my articles uh, on my website, uh, pianocareer.com. Now we have reached uh, one of the most interesting elements of a pianist's arms, which is the wrist. This is the place that allows us to breathe when playing, because each time we play something, if we play with a tensed wrist, do you notice how brutal the sound is. Besides creating an ugly
ugly type of sound, tension also doesn't allow us to develop our technique the way a relaxed wrist allows us to do. A flexible, relaxed wrist in piano playing is the secret towards achieving a very beautiful, deep sound, expressive. to the cantability of the human voice or uh, the violin or sometimes we can even compare this sound with the sonority of an entire symphony orchestra. Now we have reached our knuckles and our fingers. You have probably heard the comparison that uh, you should imagine that your hand is holding an apple or a tennis ball. I prefer to tell my students to imagine that their hand, their palm and especially their knuckles are forming a round dome. This dome should not be tensed, but at the same time it should not collapse. You should always avoid this kind of piano posture, when the fingers are too rounded and the, the knuckles collapse downwards. This way the energy of the sound and the weight coming from your back will remain trapped here and it will go into the floor instead of going freely into the keyboard. When we talk about our fingers, you have probably heard many times that it's good to keep your fingers rounded. Yes, that's entirely true, but at the same time you don't have to exaggerate. When your fingers are too rounded, this again creates tension and it doesn't allow you to control your technique so well. But when your fingers are placed like this, rounded, but coming down slightly on a vertical slope, then it's much easier what you're doing. Now that uh, we've reached discussing the proper posture of our fingers, I just remembered what the great uh, Russian piano professor Heinrich Negaus said in his book The Art of Piano Playing. The fingers of a pianist should be always uh, precise and ready for battle. At the same time, our entire arms, consisting of our shoulders, elbows and wrists, should be extremely, extremely relaxed. This playing principle, relaxed arms and uh, crisp, precise fingertips is the foundation of a correct playing posture. It is used not only in the Russian piano school, but uh, by all great professional pianists uh, worldwide. If we play with relaxed arms and precise fingertips, our sound will have power because it will channel the entire weight of our body and uh, it will have depth because it will be softened by the flexibility of our wrist. At the same time, we will have articulation because uh, our fingers will play like the claws of a cat, really precise and with an extremely relaxed arm. So again, keep your fingers rounded, but not too much. Keep them stable, make sure that there is strength in your fingers, but at the same time try to avoid tension. I will say it now and I will also repeat it many times, tension does not allow us to have a beautiful sound, relaxed, beautiful sound to develop a very good crisp technique. So, be as relaxed as possible. When you sit at the piano, you should remember that first comes the relaxation and then all the rest. Now that I showed you the basics of a correct piano posture, I'm going to talk about uh, one more element that will be like a teaser for my next videos and it concerns the correct key attack. As I already told you in my articles on pianocareer.com, Avoid playing only from your fingertips, with a rigid wrist, with a rigid elbow. This kind of playing only from the fingertips, without involving your entire arms in the process, is the old harpsichord technique, which unfortunately is not suitable for this amazing instrument, the modern Hammerklavier, the modern piano, which has an extremely wide range of expressive possibilities. And in order to fully access this range of possibilities, we need to play from our shoulders, from our back, and not by using only our fingers, by lifting each finger and not involving our arms. This way we can play from the most delicate piano to the most powerful forte and to everything in between. entire arms, involve your back in the playing process, don't forget to sit with dignity with a straight back 
And of course, don't forget to have a positive attitude and a state of a calm, relaxed concentration. My name is Ilinka Vartik. Thank you for watching. And if you're interested in more piano playing tips and secrets, don't forget to visit my website, pianocareer.com. Thanks and talk to you soon.